actually every toolbox ought to have about a case of this coal. Rick here and today we're gonna see why this thing misses so bad uh, I'm hoping that it's just maybe plug or plug wire or points or something like that but it may not be so come along with the journey and we'll find out okay so it's a little bit windy so I don't know if you can hear me very good or not but what we got here is a 225 slant 6 and uh, it's supposed to only have 57,000 miles, and it looks pretty clean. You saw the power washing video. Do you have to drive by while I'm recording? Gosh. Anyway, uh, what I wanted to do is it's missing a little bit. You know, it, it don't it won't idle, and I know I've got a vacuum line up here that's bad, so I'm going to try to cut that off and temporarily get that fed up on that carburetor over there. And then um, we're going to pull the, I've already popped the cap off, and we're going to pull the rotor out, and we're going to look at the points. See if they're, uh, just see how they are. Need to get them gapped and cleaned up a little bit. I've got an old-fashioned points file in there I think I haven't used in 40 years, so I'm going to get that out and, and give that a shot. So, all right, show you more. Well, it's been 30 or 40 years since I've used that points file, and uh, five or six toolboxes later, and where I thought it was at, I don't find it. So we may have to, I did find my uh, feeler gauge though, we may have to do a pudding points gap there and get some sandpaper and rub down in there and just go with that so anyway all right show you more no nope, that's a paint can opener that ain't gonna clean your points no that's a church key that'll open up your adult beverage but that ain't gonna clean your points there's a file oh but that might just be a little bit too big well, let's see. Why are that guy is always weed eating over there? Can you stop that noise? Let's see here. Well, there's a crescent wrench. No, that won't clean your points. Here's whatever toolbox ought to have. Actually, every toolbox ought to have about a case of this coal. Sorry, got sidetracked. Need to put a little air in this tire. About 32 pounds ought to do it. She's a getting a little low. Oh yeah, that's raising her up a couple of inches. Of course, we're going to be lowering it a couple of inches, but not today. All right. That's looking like 32. We'll just hold her right there. All right. Okay. Like I said, uh, I didn't find my uh, file, so we're going to take a piece of this sandpaper, and we're going to get down in there and pry that open and clean that out a little bit, and then we're going to give it a couple of Okay, show you more. Now there just ain't a whole lot of room down in here, so you guys are just going to have to try to look. And I'm going to have to try to get my big beaters down in here and pop that thing off of there. And look at it. Yeah, well, I'd say that looks a little burnt, wouldn't you? Okay. So that's something good to look at. Let's give this a little blast down in there. Now I ain't sure if that thing is open. 
or not. And I ain't sure if you can see, because I can't see if you can see. So I'm going to take this down in here. Try to keep you looking at where I'm at. And I'm going to pry that open. And run that sandpaper a little on there. Just kind of like that. And we're going to take and blow that out a little bit. Like I said, I don't know if you can see or not. This may be a total waste there. I have no idea. Let's see if we can blow between there. I don't want to get any stuff on there. Okay. Okay. So, we got our uh, rotor bug here. Kind of looked it over. I don't see anything really wrong with it other than it's got a little carbon track there and it's a little dirty there. And I do know from the previous owner that it has been off the road since 2018. So we want to uh, just kind of look it over. But I'm not going. I don't want to put much into it yet until I find out if the head has to be pulled or whatever. But if we can get it to idle on all six cylinders, well, that would be a handy thing. And then we can go from there. I did buy an oil and a filter, and I bought a uh, transmission pan gasket and filter for the transmission, and four quarts of oil for that, which cost $8.50 a piece. That's ridiculous. It's cheaper to buy the motor oil. All right, so I'm going to put this rotor back down on there and put the cap back on. Okay, what I was talking about here on this, this thing is rotted clear off of there. So I'm going to cut it off right about here and then unhook it and reroute it and get it long enough to hook up over here. This one appears to be solid. It's pulling from the PCV valve, which I'm sure is probably, yeah, we'll just leave that in there. But I'm sure it's probably no good. And uh, we'll kind of look and see if there's any other vacuum. What is this goober here? This is off of the... Is that a, what is that? I thought that was a Ford thing there. Hmm. Interesting. Well, I think that ought to be routed off of there and run up here. How's that? Okay, well, for goodness sakes, hung up on the dipstick. All right, so let me get something and cut that off. Sit you guys down right there. Maybe. Maybe you can see what's going on. Get out my trusty pocket knife here. Snip that off a little. Oh, well, there it is right there. And reroute this thing out of that right over to there, maybe. Oh yeah, it's a little tighter now. Before it would just fall off. Okay, so there's that. So let's look and see if there's anything else going on over here on that old carburetor. I don't see. Well, there is. Look at all. Look at all that vacuum stuff going on there. What's that? I know we got vacuum brakes, but where in the world would this have went from? I never seen anything quite like that. What? This thing over here. Okay, that's got some kind of electronic thing there. Probably special option from 1975. 
so anyway all right well let's see if it'll start and idle now i doubt it i'll tell you what we're going to take this boiler gate thing off of here let me put you guys up here where you're supposed to be instead of in my hand jumping around everywhere all right let's pop this off of here kind of get an idea of what's going on We'll just set that right there. That's probably in your way. Okay, well, you come on over here. Uh, maybe we'll... There. I just don't want that to fall down. You know. Okay, let's give this thing a, a whirl and see if it starts. Uh -huh. that's what it was that them points were dirty down there so or else a combination of that and this vacuum line here I know. but it does act like it's a running now but she's a missing a little but we got to figure that out We ought to check those spark plug wires because somebody has replaced them and make sure that it's actually in time. So let's do that. All right, I'm sorry, fellas, for the wind, but I got me one of these here Chrysler full size 67 to 88 repair manuals, and I know what you're going to say. Well, Rick, you can get all that stuff on online you can download a PDF and you can go to YouTube and, and you're right you can but I like something I can hold on to instead of trying to read it on this screen that's killing us all and ruining our eyes so so I'm gonna flip this open here and it's got the firing order right here it says it's one five three six two four and that is for the 189 and the 225 and this is a 225 because I ran the uh, VIN it's a 225 half ton pickup and it was built in Warren plant number one up there in Michigan in 1975 and this is 55 55,018 truck built of that model in year or whatever so anyway so just so you know we ain't got nothing special here <laughs> okay let's check the firing order okay like I said the firing order on this thing well this is number one cylinder so one two three four five six all the way back that way and the firing order is one five three six okay so I've located number one on my distributor and that would be right there where that number one is can you see that that has a number one made into the distributor cap now so that means that this wire that's plugged into that one should go to number one cylinder but guess what number one cylinder is plugged in to number two cylinder so I would say that it ain't gonna run right so let me see if I can get you set up somewhere where you can watch what I'm doing and let's see if we can fix this all right so if that's the case this is the coil wire here's number one and number one is on the wrong one so let's put that on there maybe this has got the vice grip garage anti-theft system set up on it you know I don't know coal wires in the middle though he usually switches that out so I don't know and I don't know what that's for either but we'll have to figure that out at another time so let's get that up out of the way there all right so we got one going to one so that's important now number two is this one right here and that would be this one right here 
Okay. And then number three cylinder, which is this one right here, gets plugged in to right there. Okay. Number four cylinder, which is this one right here, gets plugged into this one here. So that one's wrong. Now that don't mean that the distributor's in the right spot, guys. So I'm just telling you. I'm just going by the book right now. We may have to figure something else. Somebody might have put a distributor in it from an Etsy. You just don't know. All right, number five goes down here. And number six goes up here. I don't see how this thing would have run at all. All right. Let's just take a look at the book real quick. And make sure, because we know we got a 225. Distributor rotates clockwise, which is this way. So one, five, three, six, two, and four. And it was not like that at all. So, let's see if it runs now. Well, I'd say that wasn't right, guys. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can figure this out. I've rotated this around. Now, I did not pull the plug wire and make sure that we're on top dead center, but according to the timing marks, if you can see that, we are at top dead center on the timing marks. We could be 180 out. I'll tell you right there that that distributor is pointing to the one that was hooked to number one originally, okay? So that tells me we're going to rotate it once more around to the timing marks and make sure. But that tells me that that distributor was, has been out and was put back in and was not put in the right direction because on number one it should be pointing down here according to the book. So it'll still run but we got to make sure that we are firing where number one is at and that's not what we're doing right now that's why it backfired so all right show you more We're up to top dead center, and now our number one is down there, which is one off. You look here, it's one off from here, so it's pointing at this one. So, with that being said, we still don't know if we're on top dead center or if we're on the 180 out. So I think we're going to have to pull this spark plug, verify that we are up on top dead center, and then we'll go from there. Probably not going to pull the distributor and reset it so it's right. We're just going to wire these sparkulator wires, as uh, Derek says, and uh, make it work. Okay. All right. Let's pull this plug out. Okay. Of course, the idea here is to make this like brand used. So, so is it a 13 16 spark a later, or is it a 5 8 spark plug? Well, I'll tell you, I don't know. Uh, I wouldn't think it'd be a a 5 8 one. So let's try this 13 16 and see what happens. I'll tell you what, by golly, I believe that's a small plug. 
1975, so you know, somewhere around in here is when they started changing all this stuff. Yep, that's what she is right there. Okay. I'm very tight. Just okay, I guess. Like I said, the cap and the wires all look new, and the points had a little corrosion on it, and so did that rotor, but maybe someone tried to do a tune-up. I don't know why they would have had the distributor out, but it surely wasn't that way from the factory. Okay, well this is my top dead center piston checker 9000 9, here, so the idea is to slip this in the hole where the spark plug goes and see if the piston is at the top or if it's at the bottom. So let's put that in there and see. First you have to find the hole. It's up here by this dirt dauber nest. Well, I gotta tell you, I think we're right up on. We we must be on top dead center right there, because I can't get that to go in. So let's roll that baby around one more time. And let's see what we find. Okay, what I wound up doing here is I wound up putting my compression ga gauge in there because I cannot touch, I can't get my short fat fingers back in that hole where that spark plug goes. So I'm going to rotate this over and it should, it's not going to show full poundage, but you should see, see the noodle, noodle, see the needle me move Gosh. Oh, of course. Just fall down off there. I would. You should be able to see the needle move whenever I rotate this over and bring it up on top dead center. It should build compression. If it was on the exhaust stroke, it would be putting the uh, uh, exhaust out, or the exhaust valve would be open, so there would be no pressure. So let me bring this up. Let's see if we move any. The old girl's got some compression, I can tell you that. Look at there, that moved. So we must be coming up on compression, or up on top dead center. I don't see the mark yet. Yeah, it's coming up. Okay, there is top dead center. So, and we definitely had some compression just moving it over by hand. I just released it, so. All right, let's see where we're positioned at over here now. See, that thing is up there where they had it. So number one is pointing up at that, at this one right here. And it's supposed to be at this one, not that one. So I would say, unless that distributor has moved an awful lot, which I suppose that's a possibility, uh, that thing is way off. Let me see if that distributor's loose. All right, show you more. Okay, well, I had 14 phone calls and three text messages. And I was working on this while I was doing it, and I forgot to turn the camera back on. So what I wound up doing, if you remember, number one was pointing up here, because someone had probably had the distributor out and put it back in wrong. So what I did was I took the bolt out, lifted, well, took the cap off, lifted the bolt distributor up enough to turn the distributor, and I got it pointing to number one, which is right here. And then I put it back down in there, 
and then made sure there was enough room to adjust fall, uh, retard or advance and uh, then I put my screw back in and it's just hand tight because I, if I want to move this we might put the time light on it if it actually does, runs and doesn't backfire so so let's check our firing order again and we'll go from there all right okay let's see if it'll run uh, the timing or the uh, wires were on the correct terminals for the factory settings and once I moved the distributor to be where number one was now we're back to standard but I don't know if it's going to run but let's see if it will all right I think she's a little bit slow. Let me see if I can advance it a little bit here. Well, I don't want them to move on me. That thing might be a spinning. I might not have got it tight enough to just hold it there in position. Let's try that. Alright, let's see what it does now. Okay, I've got it all the way advanced as far as I can and it's up against the stop. So that tells me that I'm one tooth off down here. So I'm going to pull the cap back off, take the bolt out, ease it out, move it one, one bolt ahead or one tooth back and then put it back down in there. Alright, show you more. Alright, she's running now. Not running real good, but uh, so it's uh, can't believe, I can't hardly tell whether that's a exhaust leak or I hear a little uh, lifter noise, but it's also like there's an exhaust leak or something leaking somewhere. the video on this one. It may have a valve burned out of it. 
because it's popping somewhere and I'm not sure where I mean I realize it's open exhaust and it's going to be loud but it's it's almost like it's sucking air back through there somewhere so we may have to take the valve cover off and make sure that there's not a rocker arm that's fell off or something I don't know uh, I've never worked on one of these slant sixes before so if you guys out there know anything about them why well, drop me a comment or you can uh, email me at Ricky Allen 2021 at yahoo.com I'll try to scroll that up there so you can see it but yeah I don't know for sure uh, what's going on with it it's new to me if it was a 302 Ford or a 400 Ford and I heard that noise I'd say we had a burnt valve but you know this thing may have lost enough oil pressure and maybe one of the push rods fell off you know I don't know I'm, I'm just I'm just guessing right now at stuff so I think the next step is probably to pull that cover off of there and just kind of take a peek in there and see what's going on uh, I guess what I could have done if it was running I could have see if we've got a bunch of blow by coming out of here that would tell me if it's an exhaust if it's a valve because it would be pushing back through here I guess we could do that well that's obviously not it so all right looks like the valve cover's been off before because that bolt ain't even tight so I'll bet you there's something going on in here that's what you never know so all right I'm gonna shut her down and that's gonna be it for today because we definitely got something going on with it but I appreciate you watching the watching the channel and subscribing and be sure and uh, like and share and ring that bell so you know when the next video comes out because it's looking like we got a lot to do yet all right show you more bye okay well what we learned today was that it's got a miss in it uh, it's only running on six and there's a clanking noise and it sounds like it's up there in the tappet area or in the uh, rocker arm area somewhere under that valve cover. So like I said in the video, we're going to uh, pull that off, not today. Uh, looks like somebody's been in it anyway because the valve cover bolts are loose and it's got a fairly new looking gasket under it. And it also looks like where the oil filler cap is at, that's been modified. So we need to get under there and see what's actually going on. But I had told you that I ran the VIN number, and uh, there's nothing special about this vehicle. I thought maybe it was an old Navy vehicle, but that's not, it's just not correct. It doesn't show up as a, as a Navy or as a military vehicle of any kind. So it is a D100, and it has the conventional cab with swept line box. So that's what it has. And it's a gross, uh, it's a B. So the gross weight on it is 6,100 pounds to 10,000 pounds. Uh, and it has a 225 slant one barrel, a one barrel slant six. Actually, it says, that's why I'm wrong. It's a 225-1 slant six 2V. So it's supposed to have a two barrel carburetor on it. So it, pro it probably does. I didn't even look down in there. And it was built in 1975. Now, it says in there uh, that 19, some of the 1975s, that's when they went to electronic ignition. I read that in the motor manual book. So it says in there somewhere that some of the trucks came out with points. This one has points. But it also has a lot of extra wires running over there to that. So I'm wondering if this wasn't a digital or wasn't a uh, electronic ignition vehicle and someone's modified it with a distributor off of an older slant six i don't know it's hard to say i didn't pull the distributor all the way out to identify any numbers on it all i did was pull it up and put it in the right position for number one so so we'll be checking on that i think i said earlier it was built at warren trunk truck truck plant number one uh so because it has an s code and um and then it gives the wheel bus, ton rating, and then uh, it was the 55,018th vehicle built.
for that year. So, truck. So, all right. Thanks for watching. Show you more.